This morning I'm at the Missionary Grove Baptist Church. So we are just outside of uh, Camden, Tennessee. It's not too far from uh, my home in Big Sandy, Tennessee. And you may be aware um, there was some really serious flooding in Waverly, Tennessee, which is only about 25, 30 minutes from here. And so uh, my friends, Lisa and Donahue, go to Missionary Grove Church, and they invited me to help out with the relief efforts today. So we're gonna head out to Waverly and help with some of the cleanup of the, uh, of the flood damage, uh, along with Missionary Grove Baptist Church. So uh, I felt a great need to go and help people when a time of need. So I cleared my work schedule so that I could come and help. My, my company was very accommodating for me to be able to take off today to serve uh, my friends, neighbors, community and uh, the spirit of paying it forward, which is what uh, we try to do as we travel and here in our own community. So uh, come along with us. We'll give you some pictures of the uh, of some of the damage and what we do uh, here with some of the good along the way. her first day as manager oh she had God. worked here and she had worked at Erin and it was her first day as manager here mm -hmm. this side of this way you know I don't you can't tell really it flooded in at the court square that lower stuff well on that over that way is where it's all bad when, you know flooded. yeah you can see that it declines back there that's we're a little like higher up here. Runs back through there. Yeah, between here and the Oh yeah, I can see you back there. So there's a bunch of houses. What, both of those people? Yes. Man. Nathaniel was just a teenager. But he was autistic. And Miss Mary, I believe, is the lady who saved all the people out of the kept knocking and beating on doors to get them to um, um, evacuate. Yes, the car apartment complex, and then she ended up getting washed away. One well, of the only positive things out of this is when you see the human reaction and how groups come together and people swarm in to help. Yeah. yeah. What's her name? Mabel. Mabel. Hi, Mabel. How are you, Mabel? If, if, if uh, uh, she's not tied up, she, uh, or something, when I go somewhere, she will follow me. She, uh, We've got a mini eggs for the grandpa, and then we've also got a skid steer. They're going out on two of the jobs. I've been given three. We're going to go look at the ones that are closest to us on East Main Street. So we'll start with those two. If we got a shorter crew, we may just pick up again tomorrow and keep going. Tomorrow's going to be a big demo. We've got some big heavy equipment coming in. Two houses on the road here. That's our house. We've got the bottom. So we're going to be tearing all that down. I'll probably need help with traffic and stuff like that. And then we'll worry about maybe getting another house together. But if y'all wrap up eating, the folks that have been here every day, y'all make sure that you get the vehicles lined out. I want as many people in the van as possible. The National Guard's asked us to limit the vehicles we have on the roadway, especially on East Main Street.
So we just checked in and got our orders here at uh, First Baptist Church here in Waverly, which is a uh, safe place uh, for some shelter and food and medical attention that you see inside. It just makes you realize how impactful you know, in an instant you lose your house and you're going to rely on places like these churches or community centers that set up shelter have medical attention have food um, it's pretty surreal when you get down here in the midst of it so we're going to head on out into the church van uh, they've got it organized so if you're with a group and you want to come out and help you basically just show up go to one of these centers and they have basic orders depending on what your abilities are in this case, we are just going to uh, be helping with some of the cleanup. Uh, and so they basically give us the address and the orders of what we need to do. We go over there, show up, get the work done. So we're heading that way right now. So this person, we don't have uh, we don't have any information, contact information on them. They did fill out the request. Uh, he believes it's an elderly lady that's being taken care of somewhere else. It's a total loss inside. There is some furniture and some stuff like that, but this will be a, a clean out. So we'll do the same thing we've done everywhere else. There's carpet. We'll have to get it up. Drywall, everything. Total job. Good job on the inside. So um, we don't have the family to pray with, but I feel like we got to pray over these these properties and pray over this stuff. So I'm gonna ask Brother Chris to lead us in another prayer, and then we're gonna get busy. Oh yeah, you can see the water level about we three, three feet of water inside. Right, this particular home, uh, we're taking everything out. We were going to tear out all of, gut, basically gut the inside, but they believe that it's probably a total loss. They're going to bulldoze the home. They got an inspector coming out to look now. So we're just focused on getting everything out of here, emptying the inside. So we'll continue on the demo if they determine that it is salvageable. All right, as we expected, this uh, first house is uh, basically a, a total loss. So we're gonna move on to the next house. We'll let the uh, heavy equipment come in and uh, take care of this house. So unfortunately, complete loss. It's gonna be uh, condemned to bulldozed. And uh, we don't know anything about the owner, but we believe it was an elderly lady that's uh, in a shelter somewhere at this point. So we keep her in our thoughts and prayers and we'll move on to the next home. What happened here on this one, we got a sign one that hadn't been fully assessed. This is a total loss in my opinion. I think when they assess it, it's going to be that. The next house is 502 East Main Street down here. But the National Guard's working on kinds of stuff here. I've got to walk down the road and see how they want us to get to the next house. So y'all just sit tight, hydrate, and I'll be back. So if you notice the uh, red or orange X's on the doors, that was during the actual act of flooding. Uh, basically, that means they search for any uh, survivors' rescue, meaning that house has been searched.
I'm not so sure this is an OSHA approved transportation method, but uh, we're gonna ride on the tailgate. Back, this used to be how we rode back in the old oh, days. Yeah. Oh yeah. Me and my brother, we'd ride on the uh, fender wells, and then like the old motorcycle. Yeah. This was air conditioning back yonder. Remember, we didn't have air conditioning yeah. vehicles in this one. Nowadays, it's cruel to even put a dog in the back of your truck. houses here move completely off their foundations I guess we're probably we're probably going down lower so the water was probably a little deeper here that house I think is off its foundation back there The second house here is uh, right next to the school. You can see just the leftover debris all over the place on the school playground here. And I just took out the fence, the whole fence around the uh, school. <coughs> <coughs> the whole fence around the school playground <coughs> was wiped out. So I just wash some of the debris up here. <coughs> Part of things. Good old dump, dump truck of junk from the house, and uh, a lot more out there that the uh, <clears throat> National Guard and other volunteers will be coming and picking up all this debris and taking it to landfills. But uh, just a lot of sweat work here to get everything cleaned up. The second house is salvageable, though. We met the uh, homeowner. Very appreciative of the help. We've got to take the walls up about three to four feet high and take out all the, uh, the wood and drywall. Um, I think the floors need to come up, but they're still debating on whether they need to bring up the subfloors. Quite a bit of work still left inside. When we started, we probably had 40 volunteers at around uh, 9 a.m. It's uh, noon now and we're probably down to about 12 volunteers. So um, appreciative for all the help, but obviously can definitely use more more volunteers at these homes that uh, stick through it and uh, see it through to the finish so we're gonna go back in and uh, keep tearing out some of the walls and stuff good idea to bring uh, work gloves boots hand sanitizer if you're gonna come to a uh, cleanup We're heading to get some grub back at the uh, church there in town and then we'll come back and finish up that uh, second house. Hopefully finish it up. I think we'll get it done.
So we're about finished up with this second house here. We've got all the demo work done, taken out, just wrapping it up. I'm not sure if uh, we're going to move on to another house or call it a day. Um, let you know here in just a couple moments what the plan is. And then I've got a great story to tell you about one of the survivors I met at lunch. So we're just uh, walking over to the creek to get a look at it. It's probably beautiful right now. You can see right down here close, closer to the creek. The amount of damage, I mean, check this house out, cars. And this house is gone, completely gone, that's it right over there. Oh, that's third barn. Yeah, there's probably a barn. That's the fence. Still completely demolished. Houses on the other side. <laughs> and besides all the uh, debris, it's a really beautiful creek. You can see how high the water came up, and it was another 10 feet probably above here. This house is off its foundation. Well, th this house is totally gone. Yeah, see that down? You see automobiles in the creek. Yeah, th I thought that was this house over there, but that's that house right there. This house is totally gone. You see that stucco house? Yeah, that belongs right there. Okay, but the house turns this way, not that way. Right. The house is in between the garage and the. Uh, Oh my lord! The house there belongs there, but it's turned. But so the house is decided. Push into the bridge, belongs right there with that house. Oh! So one went totally destructive. Model car, model car, in the garage, we built it. And it destroyed it. The garage fell on top of it. Oh, man. That's part of our crew over there looking at those houses. Tomorrow they're bringing big equipment in and doing strictly demo, uh, complete demo, big demo, not just restoration of insides like we did today, but they'll be taking and getting those vehicles and these houses completely tore down and out of here. Hey there, I just wanted to wrap up the uh, day spent in Waverly, which was yesterday. I didn't get a chance to wrap it up uh, at the end of the day yesterday uh, once I got back home. But um, I had a few stories that I wanted to tell you. The first story is really, uh, I think, a great story. When we sat down for lunch, uh, two women were sitting there with uh, a young child, and uh, they had asked me if I was a survivor, and I said, no, I was here to help. And the one lady said that she was actually trapped. And it turns out that the lady that was trapped, uh, her ex-husband had married the woman that was sitting next to her. Um, well, the current wife actually heard about the flood and made a phone call to the ex-wife and found out that she was trapped along with uh, her daughter. And so she called her, um, her father, who I think had something to do with uh, the authorities, and he rushed over and actually saved her husband's ex-wife. I thought that was really a wonderful story. They seemed like they were actually friends and they were co-parenting uh, a child, or at least one child. So that was a, a wonderful story of uh, selfless sacrifice and just caring for another. 
you don't typically see wives and ex-wives getting along that well. Uh, so I thought that was a really wonderful story. Um, there was another story around, um, uh, this, I'll, I'll, I'll weave in this third story here in the middle. Uh, one thing that was a little frustrating and, and sad to see is that you had to have a, a wristband around your arm because there were so many people flocking the area and some of them were actually stealing some of the belongings that some of these families put outside to dry out and things like that. So just to keep the, the crime and making sure the people that were there were doing good, uh, they basically had wristbands. If you didn't have a wristband, National Guard will throw you out. So if you're planning on going down there to check things out, don't do that. Um, you know, go hook up with a community center, get involved with a group that's going to help out and volunteer. Um, the third story was, uh, as you saw some of the footage at the end, and there was a lady in a wheelchair there, her basic uh, home uh, was up a little higher than the rest of the homes, and the water got all the way to the top. This poor lady was really shook up by what she saw. She saw the, the homes near her getting ripped off their foundation, and she was quite uh, scared obviously and the water got almost into her house but it didn't get into her house but she didn't know that was as high as it was gonna go and she was in a wheelchair so if it had came in our house she couldn't have evacuated or went upstairs or climbed on a bed or anything uh, so she was able and was one of those that got rescued by the people that were coming through on the team so I thought that was a wonderful story as well she's the one that told us about the houses uh, there was three houses off the foundations there there were three foundations there but one of the houses that was there wasn't from that foundation. It was actually from up the road a ways. One of the houses that was from one of those foundations actually hit the bridge and disintegrated from what we understand. So there's three houses there, three foundations. We would have never figured out which one belonged where until we talked to her. Um, so anyway, my, my day at the uh, Waverly Floods and helping people was rewarding. Uh, it was tragic. Uh, it was wonderful to see so many organizations and volunteers there uh, of course the red cross and medical volunteers food shelter fema all those organizations were there helping out and just seeing how the human spirit comes together that human spirit is live and well i wish that we had that spirit every day and uh, not taking a tragedy for us to react and love one another so i will leave you with 60 seconds of silence uh, to remember those that were lost. Uh, I only have a partial list of names. I couldn't find the rest of the names, so I'm going to put those on the screen. Please uh, say a prayer or just have a moment of silence for those who lost.